Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard. I hope you're all keeping really well. This today is going to be one of our convoy comparison videos. We've got two Model 3 long ranges here and I want to see what the differences are. Now, they're identical in almost every way except a couple of crucial ways. One, this is a 2021 car and this one behind us here with the black interior is a 2022 car. Now, is there a difference in the suspension because there uh, are many opinions that the newer cars are slightly softened off so a bit more comfortable on the ride driving them back to back today we'll be able to tell you exactly what we think and is that noticeable but i want to test really efficiency and how much battery we use for covering exactly the same journey because what we do know and tashi doesn't tell you this sort of stuff but we did cover this in a previous video this car here a 2022 has a slightly bigger battery so it's about 79 kilo hours gross this one's about 75 kilo hours gross so what would that mean in the real world and a real journey? How much less percentage of battery will this one uh, use? You know, how many miles extra will it go in the real world? And that's exactly what we can test between these two cars. Then I think we'll stop and do a charging session. Will this battery or this battery charge faster or slower than one another? And how much difference will it take to get back to the state of charge that they're at now? Which here, we've just unplugged them. They're both at exactly 80% state of charge. The last part of the video, what I might do is put the aero covers back on this car. We don't have them for this one, but for the last bit, put them back on this car and see if the aero covers really make a difference to efficiency as well. Again, the only way to really compare this stuff is to drive them exactly the same time on the same roads at the same speed in convoy with each other. So we've got the opportunity to do that today. We've just come and picked up this car here, and this is a car that we run in the company. They're both on the same wheels, so the exposed 18-inch wheels, both with Michelin tyres, both been driven today, both preheated for charging, both just finished charging at exactly the same time to 80%. So we've kept everything as even as we can do. I'm going to jump in this car, the slightly older one, the 2021, which has the white interior, and against behind the camera will be in this one. So let's see, we did the same journey, which is more efficient, which charges quicker, and if the arrows make a difference. And is the ride any better in the newer car? Will it, you know, soon. So this is the plan. We're again from Bristol, Cripps Causeway Charger, along the M4 and then south down to the Winchester Charger. We won't really need to charge there, but it's just so we can do the test of charging speed, see if there's any differences there. So we've both got 80% exactly. This car shows a range of 265 miles on 80%, and that car shows a range of 285 miles of that slightly bigger battery it's got. So not much difference in size, but in the real world, does it really prove that much difference? That's what we're about to find oh. out. Let's uh, navigate our way out of this car park here then. So, you ready, Gintz? Let's go. There may be no difference in efficiency, no difference in charge, being a few miles difference in range. It could be all it is. Could be a boring video, but yeah, we won't know until we try this stuff. So, sometimes we get some interesting results when we don't expect to. Uh, so, we'll just hit the road and see what we get. The uh, temperature at the moment is pretty nice today. today. It's 17 degrees Celsius, warm, sunny, and no wind. Uh, and what we'll do as we go along the motorway is swap who's in front so there's no aero advantage. Sometimes people comment on that in our videos, but in reality, there is never going to be on a busy uh, UK motorway, but we'll do that anyway, just in case. And we'll see exactly what we get. That's so both cars at 70 are doing the same speed. So here's Gintz, right. Gintz, put your cruise at 70. We're on the phone together. Okay, my crew, I'm at 70 on autopilot. You're at 70. Oh, I'm 70, but the car says I'm 69. Oh, no, there we go, 70, yeah. All right. So they're identical, look. We're exactly the same. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. Hang on a minute. You're going forwards, or is this me? A little bit, a little bit. But, like, minimal. Very minimal difference. Tiny, tiny. There could be... The only thing I can think of for that, really... All right, I'm going to slow down and come behind this truck. The only thing I can think of for that is that this car's done... 16,000 miles in its tyres, and that car's done about 6,000 miles in its tyres. So, yeah. if my tyres are worn a little bit more, they're going to have a smaller rolled in uh, circumference, and therefore at 70, I'd be going even such a tiny little bit slower, and maybe that's the difference. Well, that's quite interesting. <laughs> Hello again. I've just noticed 10 miles out from the chargers that my car says that it's preheating the battery for fast charging. It's, it started one mile ago, mine. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, same here. By the time I've done the camera and I rang you. Okay, so they both started preheating the battery at basically the same time then, by the sound of it. 
means the battery temperatures are identical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, we'll see. So, um, well, let's not cover efficiency and battery percentage until we get there. We'll pull up and then we'll take the figures and do some numbers, okay? Cool. All right, speak to you in a bit. So, since last charge, uh, I'm going to take a picture of this as well and put it on the video. Right, since last charge, might be at the top here. So, uh, take your picture. I've got uh, 94 miles covered. So, if I've got slightly smaller wheels because of a little tire wear, I might have recorded more miles covered. 21 kilowatt hours of energy used, averaging 229 watt hours per mile. Yeah, what have you got? So what have you got? 94 miles covered. 22 kilowatt hours used and averaging 236 watt hours per mile. So my car's more efficient. It could just be my driving though. Obviously. <laughs> Were you just, I mean, the roads are pretty clear. Were you just on autopilot most of the time? Yeah. Yeah. So was I. So I think probably that tiny difference is probably just a normally discrepancy. However, I didn't notice one thing actually when we're going along. Could it be down to this? Now, over the weekend, one of my colleagues put this spoiler on the back of this car. Has that had a tiny detrimental effect on aerodynamic efficiency? I think we're talking such tiny differences, it probably doesn't really make a, a difference. Well, we're talking to one kilowatt hour, though. Yeah, that's pretty rounded. The, the efficiency is barely anything in it, is there? So, I don't know. It's, it's almost the same, isn't it? Very close, very close. Okay, what's your battery percentage now? I've got 49%. 49%. What have you got? 50. 50. So there's 1% of battery difference. Okay, I'm going to work out some numbers. Let me just put the, this up here. Right. So 1% of difference in the battery. So it doesn't really... In the beginning, it was like 5% difference. Well, there's 20 miles... There's, the cars show 20 miles of range difference. So flick it to mileage now. And obviously, it's a bit of an opportunistic number, but flick it to mileage. 161 miles of range left. What have you got? 177. Okay, so it's still showing 16 miles more. Right, let me just work a couple of things out then. So we've both recorded 94 miles. So let's divide that by the, uh, what did I have, 49%. So I used a 41%, uh, no, we signed on 80%, so I used 31% to get here. Uh, so that gives this car a range today of my very efficient driving of uh, 303 miles. What have you got, uh, again? So you've got 50% left, yeah? And you've also recorded 94 miles, so you used exactly 30%. Um, hang on, just messed that up. Uh, so you used exactly 30% in yours, Gint, so that would give that car a range of 313 miles based on the percentage we've used for the distance we've covered. So with the slightly bigger battery of that, you would expect a slight difference, but in the real world, it's not translating to massive amounts, is it? Uh, so there we go, there we go. Um, right, interesting. Now let's do a little bit of a race skin. So let's plug them in, let's do this exactly the same time. Let me take a camera over, you can see what we're doing. All right, let's see if there's any difference in charge speed. And normally you wouldn't charge at 50% state of charge, but I'm interested to see whether there is a difference. Okay, you ready, Gintz? I'm here. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I can't put in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I managed, I managed. Uh, supercharging, let's have a look. Yep, 90 kilowatts. 104 kilowatts, 114, 122, 122. what? 125. 125. 125 kilowatts. 100. 105. How much? 110. Don't want to sell. I'm doing 121 kilowatts here. I'll come closer. Uh, 116. I've got down to 116. 
51%. Are we going to race to 80%? See how long it takes. So the, it looks like I've got, thanks Tessa for the coffee, um, 80%, there we, there we go, I've got 80% state of charge, I've recharged exactly what I use and that would cost £15.75. What, what state of charge you got Gint? 78. 78, so the newer car's at 78%, this is already 80. I'm now going to let it run up to 90% actually before we go, uh, but that's kind of interesting, 80% I'm still pulling 63 kilowatts. What's your charge speed at 78? 53. 53. So at 78%, the newer cars put in 53 kilowatts. So is this a deliberate thing? Is that deliberately charging a bit slower? Is it, uh, we think the battery temperatures are the same because they did the preheat exactly the same distance. They've both been driven the same journey after a charge. They've been treated exactly the same. Uh, we did see this before, do you remember? With the, um, with the these cars with the 75 pack charged faster than the, the performance with the 82 pack, didn't it? Yeah. So we have seen before the older cars, I mean it's older, this is a 2021, but charging a bit quicker than the newer ones. Oh, there we go, and that's a bit interesting, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to let this run up to 90%. And next to me is a chap I kind of know, he's just pulled up in his Tesla Model S, and that has 350,000 50, miles on the clock. So if you don't think you can do high mileage in an electric car, uh, you can. There's one next to me here, and I'm going to take out the pictures. Okay, so let's turn this around, because I've just gone to 90%. The newer car is on 86% state of charge, so I imagine that's going to be a couple of minutes behind. That's me, charging complete, and it's unplugged before you get idle fees. You get charged if you sit plugged in but not using the charger, so that's what I'm about to go and do now. And then I'm going to put the aero covers on this car, and we'll see then on the last bit of the journey, do the aero covers make a difference? We've now got a gauge with the likely exactly the same aero is off, so this one being a tiny bit more efficient on that run, but what's going to be the difference now with the aeros? We'll see. You need a suction cup to get the centre cap off of this. This has got the little nut covers. You, need a, you can't get this out, but on the newer car, we've got a different type of cap like this. And uh, we're able to just pull these out and put the arrows on. So the arrows are actually going to go onto the newer car, which was a slightly less efficient car on the way here. So let's see if that helps make a difference. And in the meantime, we've got these two chaps. They've got two Teslas. This white one here has got 350,000 miles. But I hear that this red Tesla here, how many, how many miles? 453,000. Uh, can I have a look in your car just to prove this? This car's got 453,921 miles. So if I speak nicely to these chaps, you think you'd like to see a video where we talk about what the maintenance and upkeep has been on these two cars uh, that they run as a chauffeur company and what they think of them over... How long have you been running these cars? Since brand new, two, Jan, mine was January 2016. Yeah. Mine was um, January 2017. Okay. Sam, Sam bought his second hand, I bought mine brand new. <laughs> if you don't think electric cars do high mileage, I think that's speaking for itself, isn't it? Okay, so hopefully another video coming to that very soon. Okay, right, let's pull away. So that was interesting with the charging speed. Um, could be a one-off anomaly, but it might not be. So, uh, newer car, new, bigger battery. Yeah, so you didn't charge any faster. Maybe at the lower end, lower state of charge, maybe it would a little bit there. Um, right, so just the last little bit, journey back to the office now, um, which isn't that far. It's about 50 miles, roughly speaking. And I've now jumped into the newer car, 22, and I've got the arrows on. So let's see the efficiency difference there. Right, back at base now. So both cars in that last section recorded 38 miles covered. They both recorded the same amount of kilowatt hours used. One car was a little bit more efficient than the other car. And again, it was the older car that was slightly more efficient. We had 199 watt hours per mile versus 205 watt hours per mile. So both running, again, very close, but about five miles per kilowatt hour, very efficient. Bear in mind that last section was 50 miles an hour roadworks on the motorway, then some country roads, which are again about 50 miles per hour just due to the traffic. Uh, so, consistent results though. And that was despite the newer car having the aero wheel covers on. So is it possible that the old car is just somehow slightly more efficient? What's the reason for that? Could be a couple of things, I'll run through that. The newer car's got a little spoiler on the back. I 
don't think that will really make a difference. So it's a newer car, so it's slightly heavier, slightly bigger battery capacity, maybe the extra weight in that. Uh, maybe it's down to Gintz likes his subwoofer blurring a lot louder than I do. But I don't think it's any of them. I think the answer is this front number plate. So this older car has got a stick on front number plate, so it doesn't affect the aerodynamics of the front of the car. Whereas the newer car has the standard UK mount for a number plate on the front. And you can see here this square block would just disrupt the airflow that's been designed for the car. So my theory is probably that. I think the drivetrain is going to be the same. I think basically they would be the same efficiency if they were both exactly, exactly identical, you know? Um, so what we've eliminated is drivetrain been changed on this one. It has it, probably not. Would it be more efficient? Probably not. I think this one has proved slightly more efficient, especially at the 70 miles per hour type speeds, because it's got a slightly more aerodynamic front bumper because it's got a stick on number plate. That's my theory. If you've got a theory, let me know in the comments below. But what we have shown is that there's really very little difference between them. And in fact, at that state of charge, the older car did charge slightly faster. And therefore, I'd have been gone quicker and back here before this one if we had to do charging stops. Maybe at a lower state of charge, this would have charged slightly quicker. We just haven't been able to test that today. Either way, there's a few minutes between them at the most. So there we go. The older car versus the newer car differences. That's about it for this one. Uh, both fantastic cars, both 300 mile cars, as you can see here. You've got an extra probably 25 miles of range in this one based on that extra few kilo hours of usable, uh, but really not much in it. Uh, right, suspension. Let's answer that question. Do we think the new car's got softer suspension to the old car? Uh, I think me and Gintz have a similar opinion. We think so, yes, possibly, but there's really, again, not much in it. It could be a psychological difference. We're sort of thinking, are these newer? Are we thinking it's better? Driving them on identical tyres, identical wheels, identical pressures and such like, you're going to have hard trouble telling the difference. Uh, if you jump back to back like we have, we think the new one may be just slightly better uh, insulated from the bumps over the older one but again really very little to tell in the difference and the only other slight difference between the two cars is the rear brake lights uh, on the newer car it uses the whole outer section for brake lights on the older car it uses just a little bit in a bit so that's the only difference we can spot very very similar as ever with the tesla products they kind of continuously just evolve change slightly in little places but fundamentally both excellent cars here so uh that's it for today we're going to wrap up this video the difference between the 21 and the 22 model 3 long range just a little bit of extra range on the new one but not more efficient so i hope that's been useful to you we'll see you on the next video and don't forget in the meantime stay uh you know go to our social media platforms instagram twitter and facebook follow us on there and you'll see some other bits and pieces plus details on the cars we're selling so if you're looking to buy or sell a used uh, electric car in the uk especially if it's tesla let us know so see you on the next video speak to you soon hey everyone thanks for watching our videos if you like our content and want to see more don't forget to not only subscribe but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R. Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.